You know, at that uh, Senate meeting, I had the honor and privilege of uh, testifying with the family of uh, a child. And um, this, this child had a open fetal surgery, I think in the, in, you know, probably in um, 1999, one of the first open fetal surgeries to correct spina bifida, also known as a neural tube defect in the womb, in the womb. That was in 1999, I believe. His name was Samuel Armas. And I testified with him, with his mother and with his father and the extensive at the time experience I had with close fetal surgeries. Now, interestingly, also at that Senate was, um, I believe his name was Michael Clancy, who was a freelance photographer at, uh, at, at uh, for Time Magazine and had done a lot of work for many famous uh, out news outlets. And uh, he had the privilege of uh, taking some shots, actual photographs of the Samuel Armas's surgery inside his mother, right? Samuel Armas in, in uh, I believe, 1999 or thereabouts. And I won't mention the institution that it was performed at or the doctor's name. Both of them are well known to me. Uh, the, the one of the surgeons is a good friend of mine. Um, but let me say this, that during that surgery, Samuel Armas, 23 weeks, reached out of the incision through the mother's abdomen, through the incision into the uterus. Samuel reached his hand up and he grasped my friend's finger. That was memorialized. That went around the world. It went viral at the turn of the century. Instead of focusing on winning arguments, we're teaching the basic fundamentals of sales and marketing and how we can use them to win in the world of politics, teaching you how to meet people where they're at on the issues they care about. Welcome to The Brian Nichols Show. Well, hey there, folks. Brian Nichols here on The Brian Nichols Show, and thank you for joining us on, of course, Another fun-filled episode. I am, as always, your humble host, joining you from our lovely Cardio Miracle Studios here in eastern Indiana. The Brian Nichols Show is powered by our good friends over at Amp America. If you want all the news you need without the corporate media bias or fluff, head to ampamerica.com. Also, The Brian Nichols Show is powered by our studio sponsor, Cardio Miracle. Stick around for later in the show. We'll talk to you more about that. But let's get right into today's conversation. Joining me from actually one of our newer sponsors, the wellness company. Uh, he's joining us here in the show to talk about an issue that's very near and dear to um, personally me because I just have a little girl entered the world here about a year ago. And uh, this is something that any new parent or anybody who's thinking about becoming a parent, I'm sure, has been thinking about the rights of the child inside the womb. So to, to discuss that and more, joining us, yes, from the wellness company, Dr. James Thorpe. Welcome here to the Brian Nichols Show. How you doing? Brian, it's such an honor and privilege to be with you on your show and your illustrious platform this afternoon. Oh my goodness. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to uh, recover from all those uh, nice accolades. No, thank you, Dr. Thorpe. Uh, and with that being said, thank you for joining us and frankly, all the work you've been doing and helping really raise the alarm and carry the flag forward for protecting the rights of the unborn child inside the mother. And that's going to be really the, the, the focus of our conversation today. Now, I know this is a very politically charged issue. We have folks who very much argue on behalf of the rights of the mother, other folks on behalf of the rights of the infant inside the mother. I think there's a lot we can uh, unpack here for today's conversation. But before we do that, Dr. Thorpe, do us a favor, introduce yourself here to the audience and specifically where you uh, really have dug into this topic and why this is such a passion project that you have brought into your career. Yes. Uh, my name is Dr. James A. Thorpe. Uh, I go by Jim, Jim Thorpe. I'm an MD. I've been in practice for 45 years next month, 45 years. I've been doing obstetrics. Uh, I am currently board certified obstetrician gynecologist. Um, and there's about 60,000 of us. Um, but I'm also board subspecialty certified in the subspecialty of OBGYN called maternal fetal medicine, or also known as high risk obstetrics. And there's only uh, 1,200 or 1,400 of us in the country. So uh, I'm focused my entire career on basically what I call my 
my Psalm 139 mission. And that is um, God created me and all of us, his sons and daughters, knitted us together um, inside your mother's womb. And you, you, we, all of his sons and daughters are fearfully and wonderfully made. And uh, life begins at fertilization. So that that's that's where my roadmap started me out. And that's always been my focus. So I focus on prenatal health. I focus on treating the fetus as a patient. Um, the fetus is a patient, the preborn. And, uh, and I testified in the United States Senate in 2003, as I had done because of my expertise in treating the fetus, the preborn, as a patient. Um, and uh, President Bush at the time in his administration asked me to uh, present to the Senate because I was extensively accomplished in closed fetal surgeries at the time. And uh, their mission was to overturn the partial birth abortion bill. Um, and we successfully accomplished that in the Bush administration. Uh, unfortunately, only to be reinstated by um, then subsequent pregnant uh, pre <laughs> President Obama. And by the way, Dr. Thorpe, just for the audience who maybe is not aware of partial birth abortion, what is that and why do you look at it? And frankly, I look at it as such a barbaric practice. Because it is a barbaric practice. It's basically ripping a child's head out. Uh, sticking a massive cannula in their brain, sucking their brains out while they're alive is a grotesque, horrible procedure. And then extracting the baby out piece by piece. Listen, this is a human being created in the image of God. We've killed 70 million preborns, 70 million since Roe versus Wade, and Roe versus Wade was a lie. That case was subsequently, you know, the whole testimony was a fraud. So listen, we are being judged as a nation. As I told the Senate back almost, tw what, 21 years ago now in 2003, an individual and a nation and a state is judged by how they treat their most vulnerable. Who are the most vulnerable? The preborn. Satan goes after the most vulnerable. Uh, child sacrifice has been part of every world empire for the last six millennia. And we are entering the terminal part of our empire. And we are being judged because we have sacrificed 70 million to the God of Moloch. So let's talk about where this conversation um, really, I think, in today's discourse, has, has fundamentally had a, a real like black and white moment. And that is, to your point back 21 plus years ago, the idea of abortion, much as it was promoted by the Bill Clinton administration and Democrats pretty much at that time were leading this argument of safe, legal, and rare. Now it's hard to imagine you fast forward just two short decades and we're having conversations arguing whether or not a, a fetus, an unborn child in the womb is in fact a life. So I just want, if you could, Dr. Thorpe, to unpack how we've gone from a an argument of safe, legal, and rare just 20 short years ago to now those same people trying to basically, no, they are ultimately trying to remove the, the value of life that an unborn child in the womb brings, not just forward, but just the inherent humanity therein. Yeah. You know, at that uh, Senate meeting, I had the honor and privilege of uh, testifying with the family of uh, a child. And um, this this child had a open fetal surgery, I think, in, the, in you know, probably in um, 1999, one of the first open fetal surgeries to correct spina bifida, also known as a neural tube defect, in the womb, in the womb. That was in 1999, I believe. His name was Samuel Armas. And I testified with him, with his mother and with his father and the extensive at the time experience I had with closed fetal surgeries. 
Now, interestingly, also at that Senate was, um, I believe his name was Michael Clancy, who was a freelance photographer at, uh, at, at, uh, for Time Magazine and had done a lot of work for many famous uh, out news outlets. And uh, he had the privilege of uh, taking some shots, actual photographs of the Samuel Armas's surgery inside his mother, right? Samuel Armas in, in uh, I believe, 1999 or thereabouts. And I won't mention the institution that it was performed at or the doctor's name. Both of them are well known to me. Uh, the, the One of the surgeons is a good friend of mine. Um, but let me say this, that during that surgery, Samuel Armas, 23 weeks, reached out of the incision through the mother's abdomen, through the incision into the uterus, Samuel reached his hand up and he grasped my friend's finger. That was memorialized. That went around the world. It went viral at the turn of the century. That one image of that young in utero Samuel Moss transformed and exposed the lie of the um, child sacrificers, the baby killers, in one photograph because uh, Planned Parenthood had portrayed it as an amorphous glob of tissue without life. And people saw for themselves what life Samuel Armas had inside his mother's womb at 20, 22, 23 weeks, whenever it was. So that you by the way, Dr. Thorpe, right now on the screen for the video uh, viewer, we are sharing the picture from um, Samuel Armas and that exact moment you're referring to. How powerful to see that little hand. And I'm actually getting worked up because I remember when my daughter was born just you know a short year ago, and I had that little hand wrap around my finger the first time I held her. And I I just I cannot imagine the mindset of someone feeling that little finger around their, around their, their hand around their finger and, and not sensing that inherent humanity, that value of life that is therein. And the fact that there are so many people who, despite quite you know obvious data, obvious facts and, and evidence that we presented here just even today, they will still look at that and say, well, it's not born yet. Is it viable? And I just, I, I, I can't personally um, grapple with those arguments just from the sheer lack of humanity that they have at their onset. So to those folks who, they, they almost have this knee-jerk reaction, Dr. Thorpe, like if we hear anything uh, against the idea of abortion, or let's use their verbiage, anything against the right of the mother to choose, they instantly get... Uh, you know, angry. So what can we say to those folks who were trying to bring this, this story, this message of love, of life, of humanity to a group of people who have so, I guess, re resoundingly rejected it? What, what's the best argument we can make? Or is there simply not an argument to make it to those folks? And instead, we should be focusing our time elsewhere. Well, I, I think that, um, and, and I use this spiritual term, um, and, and I'm not name calling, but but they, uh, as as the Bible would portray them, as Jesus would portray them, these are bastards. Uh, and I mean that not name calling, but um, they'll never see the truth because their father is not God. Their father is Satan. So they are spiritual bastards. And, um, you know, we can only pray for them. But um, child sacrifice, um, 70 million babies now that we sacrifice to Moloch, um, the false satanic uh, pagan god. Uh, this, listen, this is nothing new. This has been celebrated in every single empire for the last six millennia. We go through phases of, of progression of demonic capture of our nation. And we're in the terminal part of our nation if you can't haven't figured it out. But uh, I, I would focus on truth, uh, the truth, uh, a life, um, focus on the city on the hill, the salt of the earth, the beacon of light in a dark world. And that's the word of God. Uh, the Bible is the only book ever published in world history that validates itself. 
Listen, in Isaiah 46, God said, I am the only God. There is no others before me. Only I can tell the end from the beginning. And then mocked out all the other false gods that they were worshiping that they made with their hands. So, uh, and, and the Bible verifies itself with the thousands of prophecies that have long since been 100% accurately fulfilled. So um, if you don't know who your savior is, uh, Jesus Christ, you better figure it out real quickly because you don't have much time left. So let's take this conversation around um, the, the rights of the unborn, um, the value, the inherent value of life. And let's, because we are a sales podcast, we'd like to teach people how not just we, we got to certain ideas, but frankly, how to help sell different ideas. And, and with that, you have to almost unsell at certain points. So let's kind of unsell. Let's go back to how we got here, right? Where a a country, a society of, of folks, so many of folks especially have jumped on board with this mindset of, of pro-choice, of no value to the life of the unborn. So I wanted to you know just dig into how we got here, especially from the medical in uh, the medical system. And we look at big pharma, we look at big, big uh, medicine, big public health, whatever you want to call it. And obviously there's going to, going to be uh, behind the scenes, uh, multiple, you know, different figures in, in government figures in healthcare who they work together and they, they bring policy to the forefront that then matches healthcare policy. Does it? Then that's the question. So I know in, in one of the areas I was re doing some research for our conversation, Dr. Thorpe, you mentioned Cooperative, was it cooperative care agreements? And I know that that particularly plays into what we've seen happen in 2020 through 2024 in the government's response to COVID-19 and, and the healthcare responses thereafter. But do do those agreements play any role into this this pro-choice, anti-life mentality that we see right now in in America today? I I think it's related. Um, they're different, but it's the same corruption and fraud and evil. Um, listen, the vaccines, um, women, pregnant women were targeted, um, pregnant women, the most vulnerable women. And why were women targeted? They were targeted. Um, there was there was not adequate scientific research with the COVID-19 vaccine, but I'll tell you what they did do well. They did incredible market research. And at the highest level, HHS, uh, then Secretary Mark Weber, and, and his minions and satanic colleagues up there, you know, what they did was they purposefully did their marketing research and they knew that women transcending all culture, all color skin, all religion, it's women that make all the healthcare decisions. So they made a strategic uh, uh, scientific marketing data driven uh goal to go after women, number one, and then go after pregnant women, number two. Why? Now, as I said, women drive all the healthcare decisions in the family of, of every strata of the population. Uh, any husband knows that. Um, <clears throat> number two, um, and this is going to be a shock to you and to your viewers, um, that um, men can't get pregnant. <laughs> Only women can get pregnant, right? So, pregnant women are the most vulnerable population. So if they can spend five trillion US tax dollars to promote the PSYOPs lie that the COVID-19 vaccine is safe, effective and necessary in pregnant women, they won the whole game. They won the whole, the whole enchilada because they're the most vulnerable population. And if it's safe, effective and necessary in pregnant women, no, you know, no low contendery, no argument. They won the game. Every person in the world needs to be vaccinated. Wow. Well, and let's just from a sales perspective, because I just it is fascinating when you start to see worlds collide. And by the way, Dr. Thorpe, and, and to my audience, by the way, this is why this show exists, because we have to understand that sales isn't a dirty word. You're either selling or you're being sold to. So let's look at how did the government sell this? They sold it leveraging emotion. We know in sales, emotion is the, the number one reason people make a buying decision, right? So if you're making a buying decision based on emotion and those two emotions predominantly are fear and love. So if you're promoting an emotion of fear and you're you're perpetuating this myth that you, know, you, you have to get X or you have to do Y in order to prevent X worst case scenario or possible scenarios, right? 
And then you create the, the impression of, uh, we call it features and benefits, right? Facts, figures, however you want to back up your, your claim. And that is then what the, the buyer, in this case, will use to, to validate their buying decision. So you have uh, government entity A working kind of hand in hand with, let's just say, big pharma entity A, all right? So government entity A, big pharma entity A, they understand, all right, we have to perpetuate this idea of fear because fear is going to help us sell this. So government, you're going to help enact the policy fear and big pharma. We're going to help enact the worst case scenarios of an outcome from not buying our product fear. And then we'll justify with you know all the facts and figures that we want to present. Now, everything else that we don't want them to see, we're going to make sure that the government allows us to black out for a hundred years so that nobody can actually see what we actually have behind the scenes here. So just, I wanted to take a moment and, and put a nice little bow on that because people, I think sometimes just, they live their lives. They don't really pay attention to the fact they are being sold. Right. And, and it's constant. So if you're not aware of the fact that you're being sold, then you're going to find yourself much more uh, emotionally apt to make a buying decision, be it consciously or subconsciously. So we have to be aware. Absolutely. You're spot on. Cool. Dr. Thorpe, I'd like to hear that. Um, how about this? As we're going towards the tail end of the episode, um, I like to present solutions to the audience. That That is the goal of this show beyond just teaching people how to do sales or why sales is important, especially in the world of policy, but giving people solutions that we can then bring to the table that maybe are outside the world of government. So we don't have to worry about the FDA or have to worry about the CDC or name our favorite three-letter uh, three letter agency telling us that we can or can't do something or, dare I say, going through a, a you know, whether it's a, a hearing or a, a legislative uh, a practice, whatever it may be, we don't have to do that. We can actually start building solutions now. So you work at the wellness company. You guys are doing great work over there, but I'm sure beyond the wellness company, there's a lot of different areas that we can help bring solutions to promote an environment of, of in, uh, really fostering the value of the life of the unborn while still respecting that there is difficult uh, realities that mothers, especially mothers with unborn children in the womb, have to, to face and deal with. So, Dr. Thorpe, I say all that. What are some solutions you see right now in the marketplace um, that we could maybe bring to the audience today to say, hey, even if you are on board with this idea of, you know, uh, the, the pro-choice solutions that hey, maybe there's a different way of looking at things. And let's start to consider some different alternatives. So what have you seen? Well, first of all, education. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Maggie, my wife is a brilliant attorney. Maggie uh, Thorpe, J.D. and myself have published about 16, 17 articles on America Out Loud platform. In, and these are medical legal briefs. These are highly cited briefs. And what they do is expose the governmental and institutional corruption that's gone on for the last four years. Um, these are eye-opening. So, so, for example, in December, $186 billion, with a B dollars, was spent of your U.S. tax dollars to capture every single over 420,000 hospital systems in the United States of America. They signed covenants with death that I call them underhanded, illegal, unconstitutional agreements in early 2021 that they were not allowed to deviate from the deadly narrative of the HHS, the, the killers. OK, so so it's really important. And then they did the same thing to the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. They did the same thing to all faith leaders. We've published all that. We've exposed all that. So the first thing that our audience has to understand is your government doesn't care about your health. Neither do the hospitals. They're getting paid to kill you with their propaganda from the HHS. Uh, the, the hospital that fired me took $307 million uh, and, and acknowledged that I was a model care provider for the system and the most productive uh, and loved by, by my patients. But yet they had to fire me because they took that $307 million. And um, by the way, um, they're, they're continuing to kill mothers and babies and patients by pushing the vaccine, um, as are the professional organizations, even in the most vulnerable, pregnant women, preborns, and newborns. So be aware, spread that knowledge, and, and then don't trust your doctor, don't trust your hospital, don't trust your government. They don't care about you or your baby. They care about their bottom line and power and control. So come to the wellness company. 
listen, the wellness company, I know these people. I, I'm on the board. I spent all last week with Foster Colson and Peter Gillily and Dr. Peter McCullough and his wife, Dr. Drew Pinsky and his wife, Dr. Harvey Reach, um, Dr. Kelly Victory, uh, you know, Dr. Hadar Sophia. These are people that I, 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 I've lived with, you know, broken bread with, prayed with. I know their motivations. I know the quality of their products because I'm formulating products right now, uh, prenatal vitamins that's going to, you know, revolutionize the market. I know how we put our formulations together and I stand by them. Um, so we, we have like, for example, the emergency medical kit um, and also the contagion kit. We have four kits. Those two kits, the emergency medical kit and the contagion kit, every household in the United States of America should have one. Listen, what happened last week? I was Wednesday night. I was away from my beautiful wife, Maggie, all week. You know, she's an incredible athlete, you know, uh, and very fit, very healthy. But she picked up from uh, the gym. She just had a being on her knee on a pad. She picked up a fulminant, aggressive cellulitis infection of the skin, and she got septic. Uh, she was febrile. This was Wednesday night. She sent wow. me a picture. And, you know, what did I do? I immediately dove into that kit, got the appropriate medications and got her immediately on therapy. And thank God, you know, um, she recovered and, you know, within hours felt better. But literally, I had an orthopedic surgeon when I got back in, in town, a very close friend, look at the picture and look at her knee and said, you know, uh, you'd be dead now or, or you'd be in the ICU on a ventilator. You know, um, the Daily Mail. Um, I did a segment with, with on another network just three months ago. There is one American citizen every 90 seconds dying of similar sepsis, infection of the blood, every 90 seconds. And some of these are just from bizarre little minor scratches that you didn't even know you got. Children losing their lives, losing their limbs. So uh, this is why, you know, don't trust the healthcare system. If, if Maggie had went to an a, a emergency room, she probably would have died or she'd be, you know, in an ICU on a ventilator with remdesivir, you know. So the main thing here is early treatment saves lives. Don't believe the lie of your government of four years ago. Oh, there's no early treatment. That's a bunch of hogwash. For 6,000 years, medicine has been based on the earlier the treatment the better the outcome of a disease. So, so in other words, you know, the rate limiting factor for for early treatment is is not contacting a doctor. You know, it's not calling a doctor. It's having the medication at home. You know, anybody, any monkey can you know get a hold of a, a doctor, a professional, if they have the medicine at home and take the right medicine. Follow the instruction books that we have in those emergency medical kit and emergency contagion kit. Uh, have that available. You can follow the instructions. You can get a hold of a doctor at the wellness company immediately if, if you feel uncomfortable. You get a free consultation with those kits. So uh, it's important to have in this day where we have lost all our supply chain, the pharmacies are collapsing. Listen, spoiler alert, the hospitals and the healthcare system are falling apart financially. They've lost, they've fired, they've killed, you know, with their vaccine mandates, massive numbers of people, uh, employees, and they're not coming back. They don't trust them. They're in disarray. If you've gone to a hospital lately or an emergency room, they're as dysfunctional as I've ever seen them in my life. And this is from stem to CERN, from one uh, the East Coast to the West Coast. I have doctors telling me and patients all over the country the same thing. It's so dysfunctional. It's a killing fields. Well, Dr. Thorpe, that is why we're very proud to have the Wellness Company as a sponsor here on the show. And you couldn't have really set me up for a better ad than what you went through and um, articulated in terms of why it is so important to, to get out of what we've always done, right? In sales, we talk about the status quo. The status quo is my biggest competition. It's not the other companies out there. It's not the other guy who's selling something, same church, just different pew to me. It's, it's the status quo, it's indecision or the worst words ever spoken in like 
ever, uh, you know, just name name the language. We've always done things this way. Isn't it, is that? No, bad, bad, terrible. So if you listen to Dr. Thorpe and you listen to yours truly here on the show, we've had Peter Galuli on the show. We've had, heck, a bunch of folks, Dr. Vandewater here on the show. Uh, we had uh, Rochelle Voth here on the show. All these folks who they work for the wellness company. And I'm, I'm blown away at the value that the wellness company brings to the market because for most folks out there, they they kind of just view their doctor as like a, a one size fits all approach. They don't view their their healthcare much like they do any other service. They don't go and shop around for different options or look to get different opinions. And and with that, they wait for the the you know the the, the permission from the doctor that they go to. That of course is being compensated by the insurance companies and by the government. So, you know, it is important for us to bring solutions to the table like the wellness company and frankly have those solutions be very different. So I, I say all that, the wellness company, super, uh, super proud to have them as a sponsor here on the show. And folks, if you do use code TBNS at checkout and the wellness company for any of their different services, offerings, you will get 10% off your order. So just please keep that in mind. If you do want to take part in all the different offerings, the wellness company has save some money along the way on top of saving money and your health by going uh, to the wellness company instead. So I just want to make sure I call that out. Now, Dr. Thorpe, we are at the, the tail end of our episode. So we like to do a little segment called final thoughts. So what I would like for you to do, if you could today, as we wrap this episode up in a nice, neat bow is to the audience out there who, and, and I'll just bucketize them more or less, right? The folks who they, they trusted the government. They trusted the experts. They trusted the, the public health officials, right? To those folks who maybe they're still kind of, you know, in the, the, the I still trust the government because I don't know what else to trust, or they saw that trust get eroded over the past four years. What's your sales pitch to them? What what would be your your best positioning of a different type of doing things? You know, so we don't say we've always done things this way. What would be your, uh, I guess I'll use the word argument for uh, you know, the, the all intents and purposes here to bring those people from where they are in their status quo to a new way of doing things? Yeah, you have to open up your eyes and see the truth. Look at the data, look at the publications, uh, extensive publications and documentations from uh, our uh, our articles, Maggie Thorpe, JD and Jim Thorpe on uh, showing the systemic fraud of every corporation. Listen, it's like Yogi Berra said, right? 2024 seems like a replay of 2020. It's like deja vu all over again, right? The same fear mongering. Do not buy it. Most of the American people, 95% of the American people know the government is trying to kill them with these vaccines. They're not buying, they're not screaming about it and being vocal, but they're the 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 uptake of these new Boosters now is a pathetic single digit uptake, maybe four or 5% of Americans. They know the government's trying to kill them. So listen, don't trust your government. Don't believe this fear mongering. Yes, the swine flu could be a potential problem, but it's being used as fear pornography because fear is from Satan, okay? But trust and faith from God, okay, and in truth. Uh, overcomes the fear and will give you more rational judgments. Uh, get out of the healthcare systems, come over to the wellness company or or another parallel healthcare system. But listen, I, I know Peter Gillily and his wife and his child, and I know Foster Colson and, and his wife uh, and his two children. I know Drew Pinsky and his wife and the rest of them. I've, I've lived with them when on, on our trips. I've broken bread with them. I've prayed with them. I know their hearts. We're over the target. We're disrupting the market at the wellness company. And how do I know that? All you have to do is look at uh, all the voracious attacks coming at us. You know, we're over the target. We've disrupted the market. We're making a difference. So come over to the wellness company. Love it. There's a call to action if I ever heard one, Dr. Jim Thorpe. It has been an absolute pleasure having you here on the show. I know my audience loves when we have folks from the wellness company come on the show because for a lot of folks, it's the first time that they're hearing that they could literally go online and get access to healthcare that actually fits their values. So I just want to make sure folks you know, remember that the wellness company is absolutely a tool 
in your healthcare tool belt. Make sure you take advantage of that. And of course, again, use code TBNS at checkout for 15 or no, for 10%. There we go off your order. Um, so with that being said, Dr. Thorpe, thank you for joining us. Um, and, and by the way, I want to make sure that people who are watching today's episode, if they want to reach out, continue the conversation that they have a means to do so. So what's the best way for people to reach out to you? Social media handles, email, what's best? Twitter X, J A T H O R P, M as in Mary, F as in Frank, M as in Mary, M F M, J A Thorpe, M F M, Maggie Th underscore Thorpe. Also, we're both very active on Twitter. Thank Beautiful. you very much for having me on your incredible platform. I look forward to seeing you again. Absolutely. Dr. Thorpe, thank you for joining us. And folks, again, we will include all those links in the show notes. So it's super easy to find Dr. Thorpe, his lovely wife, Maggie, plus yours truly at B Nichols Liberty. Uh, wherever you found the show, please go ahead, give it a share. Um, we're on YouTube, Rumble. Uh, we're uploading all of our video episodes, by the way, to x.com as well as to Facebook, Instagram. So go ahead, give those videos some love. Head down below to the comments. Keep the conversation going. We want to hear your thoughts. Also, the old version of the podcast. Going back, we have over 850 episodes here of The Brian Nichols Show. And Dr. Thorpe, peek behind the curtain. YouTube and some of the other folks in big tech, they don't like it when we have these conversations. So we had to make some unfortunate decisions, and that was to remove, uh, remove some episodes from YouTube. Unfortunately, that did include some past appearances some from some folks there at the wellness company because YouTube was threatening to nuke our entire channel. So folks, if you want to go ahead and check out those unfiltered conversations, frankly, conversations that we need to be able to have, head over to Rumble or head over to our podcast platform, uh, which you can find wherever it is you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Music. Hit download all unplayed episodes. Like I said, 850 episodes zero censorship. And we have the conversations that you need to hear because at the end of the day, what's our goal here at the Brian Nichols show to leave folks educated, enlightened, and informed. One last plug, and that is to thank the folks who support us. And that is our phenomenal sponsors. So our studio sponsors, Cardio Miracle. We have the wellness company, our good friends at Indie Emporium and their brand new Michael Scott 2024 shirt. All those links available at briannicholsshow.com forward slash sponsor. All links are in the show notes. Dr. Thorpe, it's been an absolute pleasure. Any final words for the audience as we wrap things up today? Do not be fearful. Be prepared. Don't be scared. God bless you all. Thank you for having me on, Brian. Be prepared. Don't be scared. Oh, I love that. With that being said, Brian Nichols signing off here on The Brian Nichols Show for Dr. Jim Thorpe. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to The Brian Nichols Show. Find more episodes at briannicholsshow.com.